it's only two o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, Miss Andy just came up to me and he said it was not a coincidence from what Pastor Jermaine preached last week and the fact that Pastor Jeff is with us this week. Pastor Jermaine preached last week from what I understand that God takes the breaking to release the blessing. And then, of course, Pastor Jeff is here about restoration, and then we see the life of Pastor Jamie and Bree. God is working in this place. One of the prophetic words that God's given over this house is that it would be a safe place. And that's what we are fighting for. As your pastor, I am fighting for unity. I'm fighting that this would be a safe place for people to be healed and not hurt. But that happens intentionally. It doesn't happen naturally. And so I want to commend you as a body of coming alongside of us and let's work together to allow God to create something that this world needs, not just here, but multiplied places around the world. I want to lay a foundation for a new series that I'm intending to, to start today. So I will, I'm not going to try to preach real long. You heard what I said. I tried, and I'm not going to try to preach real long. That's a good way to keep a pastor out of lying. I tried not to. Yeah, that's the first closing. The, the next series that we're going to be going into starting with the foundation today is Living to Win. Living to Win. All of you know that there is a big game tonight, right? And I don't know which team you're rooting for or whether you even care, all right? So, I mean, none of my teams is in it. I'm just going to go and eat pizza and eat some dip. I don't know. That'll be my win tonight. And so, but those two teams are coming together. They're not coming for any other reason but to win. They are showing up tonight to win. They have no other option. They have no other thought. They have worked. They have practiced. They have got coaching. They have invested time and money and resources and they are going tonight to win, right? Go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Are you with me? Now, I want to always do, I do have the notes that I have prepared on our church app. And so, if we could put that up real quick. For those of you that are unaware, we have a church app. And on that church app, there are so many different resources for you to be able to, to access from our special events to our calendar to uh, a volunteer portal for you to be able to connect. And just for those of you that may, uh, for whatever reason, not be on our, our database and you have given, then you can actually either see Miss Jackie. Where's Miss Jackie at? Right here. Or you can actually use the volunteer portal on the church app to be able to go in and access your contribution statements and we'll take care of you whatever way is best for you. And so, uh, with that, iconchurchapp.com gives you the opportunity to go in and you actually have access to so many different things. One of my favorite tools on it is the, the message notes. And I create those for you every week and it gives you fill in the blank. And even if you miss it, you can hit the little checkbox and it feeds you with the right answer. And so, it is a great tool. You can actually leave your own notes in the, the app. And when you go back later on, you can access those notes that you've put in right there in your church app. So it is a great tool. And so to get there, for those of you, I had someone tell me yesterday that not everybody knows how to get there. So there's a little tab down at the bottom of your church app that says notes. If you'll click on that, it'll take you right to where we are today. Amen? Are you ready for the word? 1 Corinthians chapter 9, go down to the end of the chapter. I wasn't planning on reading this, but I'm going to, to set up this, this series. Do you not know that in a race, all the runners run? The Chiefs and the 49ers both are showing up tonight to win. None of them are showing up with the intention of giving the game away. They are there to win. It says here, but only one receives the prize. At the end of the game, there's only going to be one Super Bowl champion. 
There's only going to be one winner after tonight. No matter how hard they've tried, no matter what has happened up to this point, there is only going to be one winner. Now, notice in this passage, the Apostle Paul says, do you not know that all in an inner race, all the runners run? But only one receives the prize, run that you may obtain it. This series is called Living to Win. When you wake up in the morning, I want you to wake up to win. When you go to your workplace, I want you to show up to win. Whenever you enter into that marriage, I want you to be there to win. I don't want divorce to be an option. Whenever you go into school, I want you to show up to win. I am here to develop winners. I am here to develop people that know how to live life to win. The problem is, is that it's not just accepting Jesus in the altar and then going out and doing the same things that you've always done. There is a way to live that you have in order to win. I got about four people that like it. Verse 25, every athlete exercises self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable wreath. Now tonight, the Super Bowl trophy will be good for one year. And there will be people after the game discrediting it. There'll be a play that was bad. There'll be a call that was bad. There'll be a ball that was deflated. I don't know. There'll be something, right? There'll be something that will cause the naysayers to come up and to discredit it. But there is coming a final contest. And no matter what anybody says, whenever he says, well done, my good and faithful servant, it doesn't matter what the haters say, it doesn't matter what the naysayers say, there is nothing in anything past of your, of your behind you that can discredit his word on your life. And so I'm here to create people that live to win. Now in this scripture it continues, it says, so I do not run aimlessly. I do not box as one beating the air, but I discipline my body. Play to win. More importantly, live to win. Now, in this room, there's a lot of stories. We've heard a couple of testimonies of difficult situations that God has reached down into and pulled people out. I could stand up here every week and talk about the traumas of my life, the difficulties. On the outside, I I might look okay, but if I was to take you back to some of those dark places, we would all realize that every person sitting here today has a story. Every one of you in this room, the enemy probably has given you an excuse on why you need to give up. Some of you, the enemy is continually bombarding your mind to discredit your faith and to cause you to not believe in where God has called you. Some of you don't even believe in the dream anymore that you had. And I want you to understand that the scriptures are clear that with God, nothing shall be impossible. Now I want you to go with me to 2 Peter chapter 1 verses 3 and 4. I'm not going to introduce too many new scriptures today, just laying a foundation. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. His divine power, somebody say divine power, power. has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence. If you hang around me any time at all, I'm going to say to you that you have everything that it takes to be who God created you to be. If you hang around me a little bit at all, I'm going to say that there's greatness on the inside of you, that you are a masterpiece, that you have been fearfully and wonderfully made, that there is a calling on your life that the enemy cannot. There is no power of hell that has the authority to keep you out of what you were divinely designed to be. You have, because of his divine power, look at your neighbor and say, it's in you. 
You see, so many times we're going and looking for it out there. If I can find the right counselor, if I can get the right book, if I can do this, if I can do that. You have to look within yourself. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Verse 4, by which he has granted to us his precious and very great promises. Precious and very great promises. There's actually a scripture in Romans, and it says his promises are yes and amen. What has he promised you today? What has he promised you? See, some of you are just in a place where you've just recently accepted Jesus, and can we be honest, your life's still pretty messed up? I know you're not supposed to talk like that because when you get saved, everything's right. I don't know about you, but mine didn't change overnight. I still went back to the same car, the same house. Am I right? But there's something on the inside of you that changes, and that's what I want you to connect with today. And so the the promise... Some of you, God has promised that you're going to be delivered of addiction. Shannon, is it possible? It's funny, Pastor Lachey said that you were born into drugs. You were reborn out of it. It's interesting, as I look around here, and I don't know all of you. I'm I'm, I'm looking at some faces. Sometimes I see you on Facebook. And I, I hear a little bit of your stories by reading your feed. But here's what I do understand, is that there is no one in this room that God's given up on. There's no one in this room that your problem is bigger than his power. There is no one in this room right here that God is looking at you and say, I'm going to pass them by. The scripture says the gifts and the callings of God are without repentance. What does that mean? That means that when God looks at you in your mess, in your sin, in your shame, in your mess up, he doesn't change his mind about who he created you to be. He doesn't look at you and say, I don't like them anymore. His love never fails and he's not going to give up on you. And I want you to join me on this journey so I can teach you how to live to win. In this passage, it says that those great and precious promises, listen to this. It says that he's granted them to you so that you can become partakers of the divine nature. Now, that's interesting. So his divine power has given you everything you need for life and godliness. And then he gives you promises that give you access to the divine nature, having escaped, look at your neighbor and say, you're already free. I actually got to read to you some lyrics. My daughter actually gave me a suggestion for the message today, Miss McKenna, and she said, she actually used an artist named NF. Anybody know NF? So this is one of the lyrics in his his song out of his intro three. I thought you had me in prison this whole time, but I'm the one holding the keys. I thought you had me in prison. You see, this whole time that I was living in depression, the whole time that I was contemplating suicide, the whole time that I was thinking that I couldn't make it another day, I was actually holding the keys for my deliverance right within me. There is something that God has given you that no hell can take from you, that no body can rob from you. The Spirit of the Lord outside of you has given you everything that you need to rise up and to become everything. Somebody say, everything. Everything. I'm going to help you all out a little bit. That means that bankruptcy can't keep you out. That divorce can't keep you out. That sin can't keep you out. What that teacher said can't keep you out. What that daddy said can't keep you out. There is nothing, no way, no thing that ever supersedes the Word of God on your life. I'm almost finished. 
closing, number four. But notice it says this. It says that His divine power has given you all things that pertain to life and godliness. So in essence, you have everything that you need when you go into school, when you go to your career, as it relates to your health, as it relates to your marriage, the problems in your life, the failures, the temptations, everything. God helps in everything. I know our world likes to say that God's irrelevant and He's dead and that the Bible is old school. But let me say something to you. God is an ever-present help in a time of trouble. He is there to help you in every modern in every current problem that you might have. Can I simplify it a little bit? Very basic, but let me explain to you how prayer works. I once could remember nobody's name. Isn't that right, Bob? <laughs> I could, you could tell me your name and then say, what's my name? And I would say, like, I actually have a technique with my wife. If we were to go up and we would meet somebody and I didn't introduce her, it's because I didn't know the person's name. And so she would say, hey, my name's Lachey, what's yours? Sometimes you just got to be smart when you're dumb. And so I literally began to pray, God help me remember names. And you could ask my wife, I almost never forget a name now. I began to ask God who is the resource for everything to give me an ability that I didn't have. And I remember names. It surprises me sometimes because I'm operating out of something beyond me. But see, it it translates to every area. I prayed about school, Pastor Jeff. I wasn't, I'm not smart. But I worked hard. But I pray. You say, that's so simple, Pastor. It's really not simple when you think of this. Is that the God of all creation who spoke nothing, spoke and nothing became something. That God that literally said, let there be and it was, is saying to you that I am dwelling on the inside of you. And I've given you access to participate in my nature. That's just crazy. But you have to know how to get access. Because the reality is, is everyone has this potential, but not everyone's fulfilling their potential. Let me say that again. Everyone has this potential, but not everyone is fulfilling that potential. Galatians chapter 5 verse 1, for freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm therefore and don't be entangled again. See, whenever God comes into your life and He sets you free of an addiction, you have to stand firm so that you don't go back into it. See, He changes your nature, but He doesn't change your opportunity. So He changes you now. He creates a different capacity for you, but you still have the opportunity to go back into it. And see, this is where the... The enemy tricks us sometimes because what we'll pray is, God, if you really want me to stop this, take this desire away from me. That desire is a part of you. Maybe you just want God to kill you. I don't know, but he's not going to take the desire away. Guys, you have desires. Why are you praying, God, take this desire away from me? You are a man. It's awful quiet in here. Say something like this. Give me your power to control this desire. Because that desire has a purpose. Y'all ain't getting this. Y'all ain't getting this. See, the problem is that I'm finished. A lot of us have gotten free, but we don't know how to walk it. Alex shared an illustration that he, an experience that he had 
yesterday, and I'm going to finish with that today. I want you to turn your attention to Alex, and this is, will be the final words. We're going to get up here and say our icon decoration afterwards. But I want you to go with me on this journey as I help you learn to live to win. Can you uh, honor Mr. Alex right here, the man of God? Grab number three. That works. What's going on, Icon? Yesterday, I was able, I had the privilege of sharing um, a moment God had with me at work. I work at a call center. And um, at a call center, I work, if you ever see on TV people working in cubicles, that's how it looks for real. And, <laughs> and so I'm in a cubicle, and we have what we call a mail carrier. And they come around, they give us our mail, and, you know, we have a mailbox where we leave papers that we need to make a copy or we need facts. It's just something to keep us in our cubicles the whole day. So the only time you get up is for lunch and use the bathroom, and that's it. Um, but there was a lady with a beautiful personality. Uh, she smiled, she joked, and she was a mail carrier. And she come around our cubicles all the time, and she just comes smiling. And she was a blessing because, as a as a working in the call center, we we're getting like negative information in our head all day long. So for her to come and joke, it was like a breath of fresh air. And her name is Lisa, and Lisa had this beautiful personality. But the thing that happened to Lisa, Lisa walked around limping, and it was obvious that she was limping. And the reason why she's limping is because she was involved in an accident, in a motorcycle accident. And she said, this is what she told me. She said that the accident shifted her hip, that one leg is shorter than the other. So this beautiful personality is walking around smiling and joking, but walking around in pain and limping. And I believe that that's some of us in here. We are walking around, smiling. How you doing? I'm good. But deep inside, you're limping because of an incident that happened in your life. Somebody did something to you. You went to a church. They offended you. And you don't want to attach to icon because you're afraid to be hurt again. You may have sinned, and it caused damage in your life, and you're walking around limping. See, Lisa, I asked Lisa, I said, Lisa, I said, is this permanent? She said, no. She said, the doctor told me I should need a, a hip replacement. She just said, I need a new hip. And I think that some of you all in here just need a new heart. She was afraid to have surgery because all the bad news that she had. And she said, I just don't want to do the surgery. And the thing is, you come to church, and the thing is, God said, I don't want to give you medicine. I just want you to have the surgery so I can give you a new heart. And so Lisa kept dealing with the pain over and over and over again. And it became unbearable that she finally gave in into having the surgery. Now, the surgery is supposed to relieve the pain, lever her legs up again, so that she can have a she can have a brand new walk and everything. So she went in and had the surgery. And I'm praying for her. And then she come back, she comes back to work. Everybody's excited because this beautiful personality is getting something that she deserves. And when she comes back, she comes to the cubicle. I didn't see her come to me. So I see her at the cubicle, so I'm excited. I said, hey, Lisa, how you doing? She said, I feel like a brand new woman. I got a new hip, and I'm so happy. And then all of a sudden, Lisa walked away, and when she walked away, she walked away limping. And I was like, wait a minute, Lisa. Come, 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 come. Come here. And I said, Lisa, you told me that after the surgery that when it's like you won't have any pain, everything will be brand new. 
And she said, Alex, she said, you're right. She said, my legs are level. I don't have any more pain. But she said, the reason why I'm limping is because I've been walking this way for so long that my body has to go through rehab to learn how to walk right again. I've been conditioned to walk with a limp for so long that I don't even know how to walk right. You've been conditioned to live life brokenhearted that you don't want to even accept love no more. What Andy came and talked about the reason why you've been struggling coming up to this altar because you've been conditioned to say, this is it. I don't have no hope. But God is saying, no. It's like, I come here to give you rehab so I can give you a brand new life. This ain't the way it's supposed to be. See, her body, see, Lisa's body is saying, this is the way you're supposed to walk. And I came to, and the thing is, the doctor's saying, no, you don't have to walk like this. There's a program called rehab, and all you got to do is go through the program, and when you finish, I guarantee you, you'll have a new walk. And I believe that Jesus saying that if you come to me, if you come to me, I give you a brand new heart. I came, I give you a brand new walk. And all he's just saying, just come to me. Just come to me. So there's two people here. There's two people here. One, you need to have the surgery. You need to have the surgery. I know it's scary. And I know the saying that I, I know that just the thought of having surgery. I'm talking about a, a spiritual surgery to open up that ugly stuff. Because you don't want to, it's like you've been closed up so long. I'm like, I'm talking about with people who's been molested as a child, and you don't want to revisit that pain anymore. But you're going to have to open up and God say, if you let me come in, I'll sup with you. If you just let me come in, I will sup with you. That's all. He said, I, he said, you won't be able to do it. I need to come in. And there's a second group of people that you've been doing this for so long. You went through the surgery, but yet at the end of the day, you never took the time out and went through the rehabilitation. And so now you're walking around feeling good, but you're not even living the life that God called you to live. So you think poverty is the way God wants you to live, but the devil is a lie. Your family may have divorce and a blood screen, but that's not the way you're supposed to live. You may think that you've been, see, see, people have diabetes in their bloodline. They're like, oh, that's supposed to happen to me. No, the devil's a lie. That's not supposed to happen to me. That's what rehabilitation says, that you walk by faith and not by sight. So God is saying, I'm coming. So I believe that God is getting ready to give you a new walk. But you got to get into the program. You got to get into connected. You just can't be in the audience anymore. You got to grab your brother. You got to grab your pastor. You got to grab somebody and say, I need a new walk. And I believe that today is your beginning. Because at the end of the day, I don't want to walk with a limp no more. I want to walk straight again. And so that's what God has wanted us to do, is to walk straight again. And the only way to do that is follow the icon. finished but if there's anybody in here that is say I want a new heart see that's the first step you have to have your capacity changed some of you can go out and try to change it on your own but you're never going to be able to do it I'm not going to ask you to come down I'm just going to ask you to raise your hand we're going to pray for you you'll say Pastor Tony I need a new heart I need to start over with Jesus I need to I need a fresh start in my life you just raise your hand and say that's me right where you are right where you are uh, come on now I'm looking Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. Who else? Who else? Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else that I need a new start? Praise the Lord. There's, there's some others of you that say, I've got a limp. I've got access, but I haven't been taking it. 
but I'm ready for God to teach me how to walk again. Raise your hand and say, that's me. I'm ready to have a new walk. I'm ready to have a new walk. Raise your hand. I think there's a lot of people in here, to be honest with you. You, you got a limp maybe in this part or that part, but you're ready to make it straight. Would you guys agree with me right now? Let's pray to this prayer together. Say it out loud. Say it bold. Father God, I come before you right now. I ask you to give me a new heart. Forgive me of all my sins. Heal me of my brokenness. And give me a new capacity. Father God, give me a new walk. Teach me how to walk again. Be the lifter of my head and give me hope for tomorrow. And in all things I shall give you praise. Someone shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo. Praise the Lord. Now before you're, we're, before you're dismissed, Drive's going to come up and do our icon decoration. Pastor Jeff and I and Pastor Shea and Crystal, and we're going to go in the back. We would love to connect with you in the back. Somebody one more time shout hallelujah. Okay, Icon, it is time for our decoration. God found it no harm to make us in our, his image. So it's in my DNA to be iconic. I will overcome every obstacle and never give up. We are Icon Church.